This is sort of our last pass, we hope, at talking about um, the substitute budget. And I believe Danielle is passing out um, the chart that sort of graphically shows where, um, where the polling landed us last night. And I'll uh, wait for her. Danielle, have you had a chance to pass that out yet? Okay. So on, on your desk, you should have several pieces of information, um, including a chart that shows generally how the items that we talked about last night in our wish session um, line up according to the, um, to the preferences that were, that were cast by those who, uh, who signed in. And as well, I have um, passed out sort of my worksheet of where, um, where there are possible funding sources that we haven't already tapped out for, um, for the one item that we all agreed we, we simply had to deal with, which was the BEP hole for, for MNPS. So with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with the, the sources because I think it's helpful to kind of ground ourselves in reality before we start looking at, um, at spending money that we, we may or may not have. So on this, uh, this sheet that says sources, it looks like this. I have listed um, under a column that says yes. This, this is funding that we are, are confident, um, pretty, pretty confident that we can use without having an impact that we are comfortable saying we, we can reassign that to items that we believe are important. So under that is uh, the recapture from readjusting the tax rate. We established one earlier on first reading and then got updated information as the, the last of the appeals happened. And from that process, there's a, uh, a gain of $940,000 that we didn't have. Then self-insured liability and judgments and losses, um, there is we believe enough squirreled away from that that we can use this amount that I've shown there, roughly 700,000 for each of those and still be within the actuar actuarial guidelines for that. Um, there are some contingencies that we are looking at tapping, GSD contingency and USD. And I will say the USD contingency can only be used on USD items. So um, when I hand my list to the budget and finance folks tomorrow, they will begin matching things up and they may come back to me and say, you didn't give me anything in the USD, so you can't really use that. So keep in mind, all these things are, are subject to approval by the, the budget and finance folks. Next, there's a column that, that says yes slash one time. Uh, this column is a little less secure. Um, the biggest piece of that is $8 million that is in our 4% fund. Our charter requires that we set aside 4% of the total annual budget for the year to be used for equipment um, and other very specific items that we do through our 4% allocation several times during the year. Um, just because common practice has shown that we actually need more than that, we have set aside 5%, which is a good practice. Um, and we should, we should respect that as much as we can. Um, but we have been, uh, we've done the math and said that that 4% fund has $10 million in it that's above what's required by charter. Um, and so we have taken $2 million of that and used it to plug the BEP hole, hole with a, a number, several other um, sources that we may come back to, which leaves eight on the table. Um, I have been reminded repeatedly by finance, they would love for us not to use it all up. Um, but there are many things they would love for me not to use all up. So um, it, this is all about making hard choices. So I just, I just say that. Um, there may be an additional million dollars um, of one-time uh, expenditures that we haven't totally found yet. That's a, again, that's a little bit of a mushy number. So this $9 million at the bottom of that column um, is a very optimistic, uh, at the very best um, case amount that we might be able to tap. And then under um, new FTEs, delay or cut, I've got $2.1 million over there. Um, every time I look at where would I cut that, it means I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one department and tell them that they can't have a position 
possibly so some other department can have a position. Um, I, I am reluctant to do that, but if we discover that we have to, I've got a list available and I'll start calling departments tonight and saying, do you mind if we do this? That is not my preference. My hope is that we can, we can delve into this with the, um, with the goal before us of at max having 13 point, excuse me, $11.7 million that we can reallocate to other things. So just, just to set that expectation, um, you will, I think, I don't know if y'all got the copy of this or not. I also had um, a list of all the, all the wish list items that, the, that we put together. If we got everything on there is at the level that we listed, that's about 35 million. So we just need to come into this knowing that we can't have everything, even though every one of the list items on that list is great. Um, and there's a good reason to include it. Um, but, but come tomorrow, we will have a list that does not include all 35 million. So I just want everybody to, to acknowledge that that's the way it's gotta be. Um, and I, I, I would love to be able to pick everybody's favorite project, but I have a feeling that that won't be possible either. So I am hopeful that uh, the good discussions that we've had, um, as well as the information from the poll that we've done, will sort of line things up in a way that'll help me figure out how far down the list we can go before we run out of this nine to $11 million that we have. Council Member Druffle, let me find you. You're recognized. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Uh, how are you gonna make the decision? Are you just, uh, I, it's a great list to really to see the consensus by area. Are you just gonna go down the list and sort of? It, there's gonna have to be an element of subjectivity and that is where our discussion will move to at this point because if I just start at the very top, the first item says $9 million for um, support staff pay. And there's no question that people feel strongly we need to do that. As Council Member Gamble uh, mentioned yesterday, we may wanna talk about um, not fully funding that for two reasons. One, if we do that, then there's almost nothing else we can do on this list. And there are a lot of great things on this list. Okay. Um, and number two, um, I'd appreciate the, um, the logic that has gone into that, but um, there are, as y'all know, those HR charts are very complicated. Um, and I think that uh, Director Darby forwarded you a letter from Melissa Roberg, who's the HR person for Metro Schools, just simply pointing out some of the complexities of raising all the support staff $3 an hour and what the, the, you might end up having an aide who's making more than the teacher next to her. Um, unintentionally creating tensions that we don't necessarily want to do. So um, I okay. would suggest, and I will open it up for discussion, I'll recognize Councilmember uh, Mendez in just a okay. second, that we perhaps look at a, a lower amount and, and leave that to the professionals to figure out where. And, and just Drupal. a quick follow-up, uh, when are you going to have, uh, this will feed into your budget as I understand, is that correct? That's, that is correct. Can I you? have pledged to have that ready to give to finance tomorrow at noon. Huh. Finance huh, has said yeah. that they will then have um, the honest to goodness substitute budget um, ready to be viewed Thursday at noon. And Director Darby and I have talked about going ahead and providing the spreadsheet that I send to finance to y'all tomorrow with the disclaimer that finance may have to make changes because they, again, you know, they may come back and say, I'm, I'm taking money out of USD that I can't use in GSD or something like that. So if people will be willing to view that as preliminary, I'm willing, I'll be willing to share that tomorrow. So that will give y'all two days, tomorrow's Wednesday, two days to have whatever amendments you wanna have ready for Director Darby, cause she needs those Friday at noon. Huh? And she would like to begin, you know, anybody that's ready, if you could send them at Thursday, that would be even better. Yeah, we don't know amendments until we see yours. So, yeah, Correct. That, so that's, okay. So I'm going to try to have it have it for you tomorrow with a disclaimer, and then Thursday it will be blessed. I got some extra coffee if you need it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Come by early in the morning. Uh, Council Member Mendez. Thanks. Um, just before we mo move off of the sources, um, I just, as, as you get to the finish line, um, I, I would urge um, not using all of the 10 million above the charter minimum for the 4% um, fund. Um, I, like bef before COVID, finance would predict the budget within a fraction of a percent um, on the revenue side um, often. And these last two years have been a massive outlier um, on that, and so actual revenues come in stronger, a lot stronger than um, uh, 
projected and we've heard um, Director Flannery talk about they're trying to get that dialed back in. And, you know, we're in a bear market in the economy now. Inflation's still going, interest rate, blah, 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 blah. If, if the budget doesn't overperform on revenue this upcoming year, and we know 4% is inadequate to do our mid-year needs, then we're going to be hearing mid-year from X department about, gee, we're not getting the thing we want. Um, and we're going to look back at, today and maybe wonder whether we should use all 10 million of that. Um, so I'll leave it at that before we move to the uses. Excellent point. And I'm sure Director Flannery is um, is nodding <laughs> on that one. So I appreciate you raising that. That That is a, it's an important issue. So that being said, um, I think everybody has the chart now there. Um, again, this was this was a poll. It, it um, Director Darby, you can remind me if I'm not saying everything I'm supposed to say, but we had a good, we've had two good discussions, both last Thursday night and, and yesterday, yesterday evening, um, culminating with people electronically going through this poll and indicating your preferences, putting more weight on the ones that you wanted to give more weight to. And so what you have before you is um, a graphic indication of that, which is very helpful. It will inform how far down the list we can go before we have to stop. Um, I will just say there's going to have to be some subjectivity because um, if I if I choose the largest one and in its fullness, then we're done. And if I choose the largest two in their fullness, then we're then nothing nothing else happens on the list. And I don't I don't feel like that is the will of the group, although that's what the numbers say. So this is going to be a dance between looking at what the numbers indicate and 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 taking into consideration what we've heard from our constituents from the public hearings and what transpires in this next discussion um, coming up shortly. So. I would, I would like to, I guess, two big questions that I would like to ask the body are, um, is it important to us to get to some or many of the smaller items on the list? Um, that's my one question. And the second one is, if, if we think it is, and I think it, I think it is, um, are we willing to um, reduce that uh, amount to the support staff, and I will, I will again just, hopefully you've read some of the information that's been sent to you about what has been given to the support staff. What was in the mayor's budget was a 4% cost of living increase and a step, which is often 3% for those who are available, and the ones at the bottom are available for steps, um, as well as for three categories of support staff, bus drivers, nutrition, and paraprofessionals, and that's a, a third to a half of the whole support staff, and that that information is available in the pay plan study that you've all been sent a link to, and I would encourage you to look at that. Um, those three groups were given significant raises that put them above $18 an hour, which is the living wage. Um, so keep that thought in mind as we um, as we wrestle with how do we do right by um, by our, our uh, very important support staff. And at the same time, also think about the possibility of some of the other important items on that. So with that, I'm going to open it up to a few minutes of discussion um, and, and um, ask, ask the body for your thoughts on, on making that adjustment. Councilmember Druffle. I, I, I think it's a very difficult decision. And uh, having watched you listen for all these meetings, I would trust you to make that decision. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Council Member Toombs. Thank you, Chair. Um, I, I'm in favor of trying to get as much of the smaller items as possible. Um, I recognize the importance of uh, making sure we bring our support staff up to a livable wage. I think there's still some work to be done on that. Um, so I want to give something. I don't think that it's necessary to do the entire amount because as you've already stated and we've discussed, it wipes out everything else if we do that one item. So I think that if we give something to support staff so they can get the ball rolling and, and bringing them up to that living wage and it's we can build on that next year, um, I think if we can knock out as some of these smaller items, I think that that has the biggest bang for our buck, basically. Thank you. I appreciate that guidance. Council Member Suara. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just want to, I, I think the narrative is very important for me. Uh, I think while we're talking about bus driver and nutrition stuff and the stuff that is already done and something is done, I think we should also realize that what was done was not enough. That's how we got here. And so 
I wouldn't hammer so much and we've done it because we have not. And we still have a lot of people that are making $20,000. That's what the number is. So I, I think that if we're looking at it from we've done something and we think that that's, that's the yardstick, it just gives the wrong narrative. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that as the justification. Now, in terms of limited funds and what you have to do and the decisions that you have to make because you don't have money, that's a justification to me, but not necessarily what we've already done. Uh, and, and I think it's good for, for me personally to clarify that. Uh, in terms of whether we give them the whole thing or, or we use uh, some for the smaller amounts, uh, let's give as much as we can. Uh, 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 I don't know how anyone survived on 20,000 in Nashville. I'll keep coming back to that. Uh, uh, and and that's, that's the call for me. So as much as we can give them, that will be my preference. Uh, but I know that the ultimate decision is yours. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Other thoughts, Councilmember Withers. Uh, thank you, Chair Allen, for recognizing me. Uh, I want to reiterate a little bit for the body um, my, my comment from yesterday. I'm really, really pleased to see uh, these results. I think the quadratic voting was, was very helpful and, and helps us to provide some uh, objective uh, measurements for, for what is other, otherwise a pretty subjective process about what people recall. So I just wanted to give praise to that. I, I uh, applaud you for bringing that forward and for the uh, folks coming out and working with us on this experiment. I'm also pleased to see that we do have, in addition to the uh, public commentary uh, support for affordable housing staffing that we heard uh, during the budget public hearing, that that, that item ranked fairly high. Uh, in the council staff, uh, council prioritization. Just wanted to reiterate again that our, our planning department staff, uh, we as a body work, uh, work them uh, very, very hard. And so I think that uh, the, the staffing for a lot of the kind of general planner staffing that we utilize is, is kind of being paid for, or, or at least we're receiving revenue for through the fee adjustment schedule that, that we are, are considering uh, in tandem with the budget, but did just once, ag once again want to reiterate the importance of uh, kind of building up that affordable ha housing staffing department within Metro planning. Um, obviously, a lot of the issues that we hear about on a daily basis all across this county is about affordable housing. A lot of our support staff, including support staff who struggle to live here, do so not just because of income, but also because of a lack of affordable housing. And so I think that, that uh, those staffing positions, I believe, uh, really hit at uh, major priorities for our entire community from the advocacy side, as well as from the business side and, and for us as elected officials. So we'll, we'll hope that we can give uh, consideration to, to that uh, important staffing. Thank you for that. Councilmember Mendez. <laughs> I also uh, endorse the idea of uh, trusting your judgment about how to balance it. Um, I would, I would remind everybody for future years that uh, um, we will never, ever, ever have competitive wages straight across Metro, and have the lowest overall tax burden for peer cities um, in the Southeast, um, and have adequate reserves and stay on top of um, building new infrastructure for a growing city. And, and so like all the talk about um, wanting to treat people right and pay them what they deserve to be paid, like we're about to enter, you know, year three of the current tax rate. And like you, when it comes up a year or two or three down the road, um, put your money where your mouth is on the paying people what they're worth and uh, make the make it so we get, you know, into the 20th percentile on overall tax burden rather than dead last in overall tax burden. And we'd find we could be able to deliver on what we're talking about. Good point. Thank you. Any other comments or words of guidance as I take this on. Councilmember Toombs. Thank you, Chair. Uh, for Nashville General Hospital, um, it is, I think, what, fifth on the list. Um, and the $2 million, I know $2 million sounds like a lot, but that is them reducing their COLA to 3%. Um, and so really, if they were to do the 4% that everyone else is, is getting, they would have over a $3 million deficit. And so they've cut everything that they can, and they're looking at cutting actual services to cover that $2 million. And that actually will go to pay the 
the so, two million low cap on the on the pensions right, that they, they have the no point, choice about paying. Two point seven million of that subsidy goes to the low cap payments. Yeah. Right. Good point. Anything else? So the, the plan going forward, well, before I do that, I want to <laughs> I want to ask everybody to give a hand to Matt and Alex back there for helping us learn this crazy new thing called quadratic voting. Um, they've been they've been very good sports and have answered a lot of questions. And uh, and it, it I will just say it, it seems more informative to me than our straight 100 points on the CIB voting, because that just gave us a flat line that said everybody wanted their project. Um, so I, I, I'm, I am grateful that we've been able to be part of this pilot and hopefully we've both learned something from it. And they'll be around um, till tomorrow, I think. So if, if more questions come up, they're still available and they'll all, always be available online. If there are no other questions, we are supposed to be moving on to the CIB and I will, I will adjourn this, but um, if you have other questions or thoughts, direct those to Director Darby. And uh, I think she and I are gonna be in close contact for till late into the evening and early in the morning. Um, doing, doing the best we can to be as responsive to all the input that we've gotten. I'm so grateful. Council Member Van Rees. Uh, yes, before you uh, head darkly into the night, <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you had the full faith and confidence of this uh, committee and uh, Godspeed. I'm grateful for that. Thank you. All right, with that, we're on that note, I'll adjourn. Okay.